this morning by way of title is condemned by the law but saved by grace. Condemned by the law but saved by grace. Our scripture reading this morning is Romans chapter 2 and chapter 3 and the scripture will be found in page 1169 in the black or red Bible on your table. I'm going to introduce the subject this morning by our scripture reading, which is the Ten Commandments. We'll begin reading with Exodus chapter 20 and verses 1 through 17. The scriptures are all printed in your bulletin, and I left out one or two places because we need the time. Let's stand together in honor of God's word and read his word. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of Paris. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. As it is the first belief, but as it is in the water in the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him, he says, that take his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy day may be born for me in the last world, is that thou hold thy gift. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear force in this against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Thank you, you see. We just read the law. The Ten Commandments is the law of God. I wish to address four questions in these two chapters. The first question is the chargeability of the law. Who will God charge with the sin of breaking his law. Secondly, the question of consignment. To whom did God give the law? Thirdly, the question of classification. Who or what is a Jew? And fourthly, the question of conversion or salvation. How can we become righteous in his sight? In chapter 1, Paul has brought the Gentiles. Now a Gentile is anyone who's not a Jew. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. Now all of us here this morning, I'm sure, are Gentiles. We're not Jews. We're Gentiles. And Paul in chapter 1 is bringing the Gentiles before the judgment of God and finding them guilty of sin. And then, this was an easy thing for Paul to do because the Gentile sins were so obvious. Then he turns to the self-righteous Jew and puts him under judgment also and pronounces him guilty 
which will be a much more difficult task because the Jew had the law. But the Apostle Paul can do this because he himself is a Jew. And he has God's sort of truth and logic to use in condemning his own race, the Jewish people. He begins his charge in chapter 2. And we'll begin reading with verse 1. We're going to consider, first of all, the question of chargeability. Who will be charged with breaking the law? The chargeability of the law. Verse 1, chapter 2. Therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same thing. But verse 2, we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them that commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them that do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Now you'll notice he says, we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth. God will never judge you for anything that you didn't do. He will judge you for what you did do. If you stole, He will judge you as a thief. If you commit adultery, He will judge you as an adulterer. If you are a liar, He will judge you as a liar. His judgment is according to truth. He never judges unrighteously. And then the goodness of God in verse 4 should lead us to the truth and repentance. Verse 4, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? He's saying here that don't you know that the goodness of God should lead you to repent and turn to God because He has been good to you. You're alive this morning. You had breakfast probably and you had a vehicle to get you here. He's been good to you. If you're not a Christian, that ought to lead you to repent and trust in Him. So he says, not knowing the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. However, sadly enough, it does not. Men can hear about the goodness of God all day long and still not repent and still not accept God and His goodness. It, it should lead him to repentance, but it doesn't. Because verse 4 and 5 says, but after thy hardness, an impenitent heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath. In other words, he says, every day you're piling up more sin. Every day you pile up more sin. Every day you live as an unsaved person, you are piling up sin against the day of judgment. And eventually that sin is going to reach such a high plateau that God is not corrupt with it any longer. Treasures up unto thyself wrath. That wrath is the anger of God. God can become angry. Now God does not become angry like we do. We get angry about petty things. And we have a sinful anger. But God's anger is a righteous anger. He doesn't have fits of anger. He doesn't get upset about little things. But He's a righteous God and He has a righteous anger against anything that offends His holiness. That's the reason I ask you to sing every Sunday morning, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord our God. He is a holy God. And so the sinner is piling up 
one sin on top of another day by day. And the revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Then in verse 6, you'll jump over to the 6th verse. God will judge every sinner by his deeds. Not by his race. Not by his uh, color. Not by his anything but the deeds that he does who will render to every man according to his deeds. Uh, if you die as a sinner unsaved, haven't received the grace of God, then God's going to judge you by the deeds that you committed. Then in verse 11 of chapter 2, notice that there is no respect of persons as to judgment. The first thing that comes to your mind is that well, God has elected some to salvation. Yes, He has. And in that respect, He's a respecter of persons because He respects those that He chose. But on the other hand, as to judgment, He is no respecter of persons. He judges the Jew and the Gentile alike. For verse 11, there is no respect of persons with God as to judgment. Then now God has been speaking to the Gentiles and now He's speaking to the Jew. And He says in chapter 2 at verse 17, Behold, now He's addressing the Jew, Thou art called a Jew and restest in the law and makest thy boast of God and knowest His will and approvest the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the law. He's saying now, Paul is calling the Jew in the court. He's going to find the Jew, as he did the Gentile, guilty. Now the Jew doesn't think he's guilty. Because after all, isn't he God's chosen nation? Yes. Didn't God elect the Jewish nation to be His people? Yes. And the Jew was given great advantages that the Gentile never had. So his judgment will be heavier than that of the Gentile because he had the Word of God and the Gentile didn't. And what does the Jew think about himself? The reason it's difficult to win a Jew to the Lord is because he doesn't think that he needs salvation. He thinks because he's a Jew, one of the chosen people of God, nationally speaking, that he's all right. But he's not all right. My daughter Kathy is a businesswoman. She has a tax business. And she called me up one day and said, Dad, I'm going to witness to a Jewish businessman that I'm doing business with. And she said, how do I witness to a Jew? What scriptures are different for a Jew and a Gentile? She said, how do I approach witnessing a Jew? And I said, you witness to a Jew just like you witness to a Gentile. Tell him he's a lost sinner on his way to hell. That's what you need to tell the Jew. There's no special case for the Jew. The Jew is under the same condemnation the Gentiles under, but he doesn't believe it, and I'll tell you why he doesn't believe it. The reason he thinks he's all right is because of all the blessing that God bestowed upon him as a special people. The, the nation of Israel is a special nation. They are a special people. Now this is what they think about it. Look at verse 19. And thou art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind. You, you Jews think that you're the ones to teach the Gentiles. They think that they are a guide to the blind. And then Paul tells them that they think they are a light to those that are in darkness. That's the Gentiles. Verse 19, a light to them that are in the darkness. They think that they have the light. 
And then the Jew thinks he's an instructor of the foolish. Notice verse 20, an instructor of the foolish. And then they think they're a teacher of babes, verse 20, a teacher of babes. And then they think they have a form of knowledge. Notice verse 20, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the